Welcome to this session on Visual Studio Code extensions. Maybe before we even dive into the, the content of today's session, we should begin with discussing what a Visual Code uh, extension is and why it is important to the SAP developer. And what you see on the screen here, on the left-hand side, you see the SAP Business Application Studio. On the right side, you see the Visual Studio Code locally installed on my uh, um, laptop, whereas the SAP Business Application Studio is a co course running in a web browser. Now, visually, they're, they're extremely similar. I do have them set to two different themes. I've got the default uh, regular theme on the Business Application Studio. I've got a dark theme set on the Visual Studio Code to help distinguish the two apart. But uh, I, you see the overall development experience flow is, is very similar. And this isn't just that on the surface they appear very similar. They share much of the same inner infrastructure to the point that even these extensions, uh, Visual Studio Code extensions, can run in both. And that's part of the power of Visual Studio Code and why it's taken off in popularity. Is it has it, a very large ecosystem and it's very easy to add extensions to the development environment. This allows individual developers and other companies besides just Microsoft to be able to develop functionality, editors, domain-specific tools, uh, and, and add them into the Visual Studio Code environment. SAP has done this. If, if we come here to the extensions marketplace, we have the ability to search for different extensions. And uh, already you're seeing just from some of them that I have installed, uh, you know, ABOP right there at the top of the list, uh, uh, Blue Phoenix. We'll we'll talk about some of these later, but you'll notice these are not offered by by SAP. Uh, most of these, uh, but we can search here, and we can search. Say, let me just put in the keyword SAP. Now you're going to start seeing some where the author is SAP SE. These are going to be the ones officially offered by SAP, and as you see here, like the SAP Fiori tools. Um, or let me just go ahead and search here for, uh, CDS. You'll see the SAP cloud platform core data services, uh, uh, plugin for visual studio code. That is the cloud application programming model implementation. So already what you're seeing is many of the core capabilities that we have here in the SAP Business Application Studio, such as the Fiori tooling, uh, the mobile development, the SAP Cloud Platform uh, Core Data Services or CAP uh, editors and, and additional functionality are actually implemented just once as Visual Studio Code extensions, and then they're added into the Business Application Studio environment as well. So, what we have here in the Business Application Studio, for instance, if I were to come here, let's just uh, let's just open a simple. Yeah, we'll start here with just a schema CDS, you know. And we have things in the schema CDS like uh, code completion for the uh, for the CDS syntax. If I were to come here to the same project, and let me just find my spot here. If we come here. Here we see the uh, the same basic project, but if I were to come here and do test and, and do the code completion, there we see the possible data types. So for instance, I'll say integer there as well. And if we come back here, we see the same thing. Because in both of these environments, the code completion for the cloud application programming model specific syntax is provided by this, the, the VS Code extension, which is installed into both of these environments. 
Let's look at a couple more examples now. But we've established that these extensions and the functionality that SAP is developing uh, via the extensions are available in both the Business Application Studio and VS Code itself. For the remainder of the purposes of this uh, video, let's go ahead and just simplify things and look at this in VS Code itself. And I actually want to back up here. Let's uh, let's not make those changes to that file. Uh, but I want to show you another example of something that SAP has delivered via extensions in the VS Code environment and to the Business Application Studio, and that's the Fiori tooling. So for instance, we can come here to the command palette, and we have a variety of tools. You kind of see them here in my history, but if I were to narrow this down to Fiori tools, we see we can uh, export a project from the Web IDE that was structured for the Web IDE, and run a migration wizard against it. We have the guided development, which we'll come back to and, and look at in a second. But let's look at the application generator. And what this is going to do, this is a, uh, a visual uh, tool that looks at Yeoman generators and creates a, a graphical UI for them. So you see the Yeoman UI, and we have the ability to explore and install other generators as well. In my environment, uh, in addition to, um, I think if you, here, let's look at just the SAP ones that I have. I've installed the Fury Elements, um, Base MTA module, and, and the CAP project as well. But what we're looking at right now is the uh, Fury Elements. And if we choose that one, and it's going to ask us what type of Fiori Elements application we want to uh, create. For instance, I might choose a list report. And for my data source, well, I could connect to an SAP system or give it the URL of a running OData service. I, I've already exported it out my, my, uh, my data, data, metadata document from my OData service. Um, oh, that's here in downloads. Let's see. There it is. Master data. And then want my main entity buyer. Uh, no, not buyer. Let's go with uh, business partner. And then we can have a navigation to addresses. That's a little more interesting. And as you see here, you can decide where to generate the project, into what folder, fill in a little bit more app uh, information. Then it runs for a second to generate the project. I've actually already completed the generator over here. And I'll just show you the results of what it created. Uh, it's a full project. It built the... Uh, the package JSON now to be able to proxy this application, it, you know, and, and now we have the ability to do things like preview the application or show the page map. Here we are at the list page, which goes to the object page, which navigates to the object page for address and the ability to add more object pages to edit them. And of course, what this is doing is it's, it's editing the, uh, uh, the manifest here. Manifest JSON because this is a Fury Elements application, uh, but gives you a nice graphical view to, to do that. And what we see here is a variety of different approaches to VS Code extensions already. We've seen how we can enhance the code editor. That was the code completion in the uh, uh, in the uh, Cloud Application Programming Model CDS file that I started the demo with. Then we saw how we visualized, added a whole new visualization tool for, for Yeoman templates. Then we see uh, how we can put a project generator in place here, how we can add additional UI pages, you know, like the project page for, for being able to editing uh, of the manifest JSON. Uh, what else do we have here with the manifest JSON? I could also choose the, uh, uh, the annotation file manager 
which is going to allow me to add local annotation files or, or edit existing annotation files, the service manager, which shows me um, uh, the service URL, and all this, once again, this is stuff in the manifest JSON, which, of course, you can still edit manually in the, uh, uh, in, in the JSON syntax, but we've got nice guided uh, uh, wizard pages or, or form-based editor pages on top of this. Likewise, I could also open, go back to my command palette, go to my Fiori tools, go to the guided development to the side. This is one I really like um, because you're doing different Fiori elements. Maybe I was in the list uh, list report. That's the kind of application that I, I added. Oh, I want to know how to add a smart uh, micro chart to a table. Well, I can see it to kind of guide me through here. Well, which entity type? Well, these are my entities from my from my metadata of my particular service. So let's say, uh, yeah, it's going to be for business partners, you know, and I could come and fill in some other values here. Of course, I'd I'd have to fill these in rather intelligently for for what I wanted it to chart. In this case, I don't really have very many numeric fields in this particular example. Maybe uh, I choose something a little better here that has some numeric values in it. Uh, sense you know like the price <laughs> um, but you get the idea and it's generating the the code snippet which I could copy and put into my page manually or I could go ahead and apply this uh, to uh, yeah but I'd have to fill in the rest of the uh, the values there to, uh, to get it to a correct point but this is better than just going and looking up the the documentation and um, and then having to fill in these things manually in the uh, uh, into the uh, annotations extensions or something like that. Uh, so just a couple examples of what we can deliver, what SAP has delivered with VS Code uh, extensions. Let's look at another example here. So I'm going to go back to my other project in the database folder. Let's go ahead here. I've got a, I got a stored procedure. Let's go ahead and open up the stored procedure. And what do you see here is it's got uh, code coloring and I believe we, we even have some fairly intelligent, uh, yeah, code completion. And all this because it knows that yes, it is SQL script, but actually SAP di didn't deliver this extension. If we come here and we search marketplace for extensions with HDB procedure, what we're gonna see is the Blue Phoenix project. And this was written and uh, released by a community member, Jodell. Um, and uh, it does a bunch of different things, not just SQL script, but SQL script is one of the first things. Also has special configuration uh, for uh, JSON syntax highlighting in HANA configuration files, has some cap level support, XSJS support. Um, the one that I personally mainly use for, I don't do a lot of XSJS development myself anymore, and uh, I use mostly the SAP uh, delivered extension for the syntax highlighting and the cap. But the SQL script and the HANA configuration files are still very, uh, very useful to have some support for. So personally, I installed and, and use this Blue Phoenix extension to, uh, to help with that. So not even all these extensions have to come from a major vendor like us for SAP. This is stuff that you as an individual developer can build and either install into your own uh, development environment for, for your own personal use or publish them in the marketplace for your fellow developers to take advantage of as well. And that's a quick introduction to the concept of the VS Code extension. Hopefully you're already seeing the power of what it can bring to both Visual Studio and to the business application studio and you're intrigued enough to maybe want to consider to create your own vs code extension if so come back and join us in the next episode and we will begin to dive into exactly that task